this is a, a bad way of using bit flags in C++. I'm just going to explain it and then I will deliberately struggle to fix it and fail. And then uh, eventually I'll show you what I actually, the t a technique that I, I actually use in my real code. Uh, so you can skip forward in the video if you want to just skip skip all of the context here. So I have two enums representing possible bits flags. Uh, and I'm using this classic technique of generating the powers of two here. So it goes one, two, four, eight, etc. Um, then I have this little library of um, like bit flag operations and probably I mean, if you've ever used bit flags in C++, you probably have a, something like this in your code base. Uh, you put probably much larger than this, but this is just a very simple example. Um, then I have a, a function declaration that returns a, a mask of these capabilities and then one for the attributes as well. Um, so I'm getting the capabilities, getting the attributes, and then I check is the enabled attribute set in this mask. And if it is, then unset that flag and then set the completed flag um, and then do nothing. It's just a pointless program, just for uh, example. Uh, so there's a bunch of problems here. Um, you probably already know some of what I'm going to say. Um, so let's say that we want to add another flag here. Um, and we also, maybe we have the, exactly the same name uh, flag in attributes and maybe these are in different headers or whatever and um, suddenly have to eat two of the same name in the same global, in the same scope um, because of the way that these enums work. Uh, so we've got a name conflict here. Uh, so... Okay, we know how to do that. We know how to deal with that because we are we are no C++. So we go enum class instead is what you're supposed to do. And then because of the difference between enum and enum class, um, these names now need to be qualified. Um, so that's introduced some compile time errors um, because uh, so we're trying to convert to an int and it doesn't, we don't, we can't do that implicitly with an enum class. So, okay, let's try to fix it. We can go, we can, um, we can templatize these, these functions, right? So instead of passing an int here, you pass up a parameterized type. Uh, then we're going to need to static cast to an int all of these flags just so that we can perform the bit operations on them. Um, then the code compiles, at least. Um, we have to do these stupid static casts. You could argue that these static casts, you could argue are, are acceptable, maybe, because they're sort of hidden behind this library interface. So usually you wouldn't see them. You aren't, you're not doing static cards in like your, lo your program logic. It's all hidden behind this library. Uh, so maybe that's okay. Um, so what else bad can we do? Instead of passing attributes here, we could pass the capabilities and the code compiles, even though this is clearly a logical error, right? We're comparing this capabilities mask with an attribute flag. Um, so, okay, one thing we could do instead of just returning these ints for representing the masks. We could actually just, because of the way that enums work, that they're just integers and at the end of the day, we could actually return these actual types and then at least we get compile errors. This is kind of a weird thing to do, isn't it though? Because um, this capabilities enum is basically, it's a type which the value should rep represent one of these possible values, but here we're, rep we're using it to uh, represent um, uh, a mask, basically. So a set of the po these possible values, which is kind of a weird thing to do, um, but we can do it because 
just because of the way that enums work in C++. But, uh, so now we can do this, but we still get errors because we're passing this, again, we're passing an enum type uh, where an int is expected. So okay, and instead of doing this type name flag, we could just do type name t and then use the same t in both places, right? And then again, we need to do an ugly static cast, but you could argue it's okay because it's it's hidden away inside this library, right? Um, and then we're going to need to actually return a T like this. Is that right? Yeah. So we're running out of space, horizontal space. Okay, something like that, yeah. All right, so that compiles. Um, but now we've introduced another problem, which is we can uh, we can actually swap the order of these arguments now because it's the same t being expected, and that compiles with no uh, with no error. And again, it's not, it's a logical logical bug. So that's a little exploration there of problems. Um, it's an exploration of problems. Okay, uh, so I'll show you what I actually do in my code. Um, so the way I, I I define a closed set of possible bit flags um, is I introduce a struct, and then inside the struct I use a plain enum, not an enum class, um, with the name E, this is just a convention that I use. Um, I just use the, the name E every time. And then I just have an int value and I initialize it to zero. So by, by default, um, the mask is always cleared. Um, so there's no naming conflicts because they're in nested structs. And then the way that these operations are defined, uh, there's no need for any static casting whatsoever. You can very very easy to add more operations because you don't have to read through all this static cast nonsense to see what's going on um so the first argument is uh the mask and then the f the second type the flag is defined as type name mask colon colon e you need type this uh type name keyword because it's a uh what, what's that called a dependent type is that right um uh if you don't understand why type name is here you <laughs> if you do enough c++ you develop an intuition for what when when you need to uh, need to put type name um but anyway that's the way that those functions are defined and then again we're returning capabilities and attributes here but it, there's that weirdness that i talked about is gone now where um this capabilities type actually is representing a mask it's not representing one of a few possible values because that um, that type is actually now a nested enum inside the capabilities. So th that weirdness is, is gone. Okay, so now most of the problems are fixed. There's one, which I'll show you, I'll show you in a second. But um, uh, one of the nice things about this is uh, usually these the names of these bit flag symbols I've noticed are usually not this compact. Uh, usually it would be something like, uh, it'd be something like, you know, gizmo controller attributes or something like that. And then that gets a bit cumbersome when you're, you know, doing all of these operations because you, you're doing this massive name every time. Um, but with the way that this is set up now, uh, one thing you can do instead is you can just go like this, which is pretty nice, I think. Uh, okay, the final problem, one of the problems is not fixed in that it, it, the, um, you, one of the things you can still do is you can, um, you can still do this, and this is not a compile error for some reason. Um, even though you, you would think, looking at these template definitions, it should be a compile error, right? Uh, but it's not. Um, apparently, it's, the compiler just accepts this. Uh, but you can fix this um, 
with a little bit of bullshit and I don't recommend doing this because it's, it's more metaprogramming rubbish. Uh, I mean, you might be happy. This is all going to be hidden away in this in this this flags library. So I guess it's acceptable to do this kind of thing if you're hiding it away and you're never editing it again. But um, <clears throat> uh, you're going to have to do a, an enabler if I'm afraid. Um, you can go type name e enable if uh, t is same v and we want to check if the flag type is the same type as type name mask e right is this right <laughs> hold on uh, let's make the font smaller let me stand back and look at this a second. Uh, yeah, okay, so we've got the compiler where we want. So now if we put attributes, she can yeah, it compiles. Uh, so we just put that at the end of... Yeah, in fact, we can simplify this now, can't we? We can go like this. That has the same effect, right? Yeah. So we get a very ugly compiler. This is, um, I think... It, um, this is C plus plus seventeen. Is C plus plus twenty? You'll be able to do something with concepts, I'm sure. Um, I don't use C plus plus twenty, so uh, I don't know, know anything about concepts. But I'm sure there's uh, some nicer way of doing this in C plus plus twenty. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's uh, I guess a robust implementation. Um, yeah, if you think. Uh, if you have like any better ideas for this kind of stuff, then uh, yeah, just leave a comment, leave a, a, a Godbolt link in the comments. All right, bye bye.